Hello, non-binary folk, binary folk, and everyone else. And welcome to the two-year episode of the Judges Podcast. My name is Josh. My name is Rick. And my name is Christian. And we yeah. are the, the Judges. 104 episodes up, seven more to go. We're what only does that going mean? to 111 and then. Yeah, 111, we're out. Yeah. Okay. I'm like the worst winnings on a slot machine. 111. Minor payout, break even, wash hands clean, pick up one last free drink at the bar, and I'm out of there. You're out of there. Talking no. about washing hands, guys, I had a very weird experience driving home from work today. All right, I'm sorry to already derail us. Driving home from work, I saw someone driving with their knee, pouring Pepsi onto their hands and washing them off out the window. With Wha- Pepsi? Yeah, I have no idea what was I have no idea what was going on with this situation. I think that's just Hilk. Hand and milk. No, I think that's just panned. Pepsi and hand. <laughs> what gross thing has to be on your hand where you're like Pepsi is a better option to be on my hand now? Jizz, farts, uh, farts is shame. Not. Blood got me right handed. Pepsi. Mm. Pepsi will cover up a murder. Oh my gosh. This is why we love Pepsi. We are not sponsored. That's why we're not a Coke family. They'll well, fucking rat your you ass out. You can't say that right now. We're probably going to be sponsored by Pepsi after this. So don't even bring them up. We're not a c- other competitor's company. A family. cola. We don't drink any other colas or cola products. I don't drink any cola. You at drink all. cola products. A cola times a cola. E cola. Yep. <laughs> What's going on? Man? I don't know. <laughs> Episode two, if you count by the fifty twos. If B it, or otherwise. F- huh? Fifty two what? B fifty twos. Bombers. Uh joke, Erica. I <laughs> planned a little <laughs> Special sweet treat for you guys. Aww. So if you guys don't know, we started this podcast around two years ago. Mm-hmm. Rough. It's actually Just pretty close to the day. Today is the 20th. I think we started recording early May. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About five, four weeks out. Huh? We recorded like four episodes before oh, we released. Yes. <laughs> um, we edged with four episodes before we finally had a release. And it's been while... <laughs> It's been a wild ride. Last year, we did a review of the first 51 episodes and picked out our favorite stories. I did a little children's book of the AB Sheesh. Uh, we did, I think we did superlatives of like most judgy. We did do that. And we didn't do any of that this time around because we have so many great stories to pick from from the last 51 episodes. So we each picked out our top three favorite Reddit stories and our top three favorite listener submitted stories. I feel like the last like fifty episodes have been our our best. Like we've just been coming definitely, up from there. Definitely two was better than one, and three is gonna be better than two. Let's hope. But go ahead and hit that that I can, cyan button I can on finally, the board. Yeah, Josh opened up tonight with me walking into the room and him saying, "Don't you." dare touch that shiny little fucking button because if i didn't say anything you would have pushed it you go yeah. "Ooh, what's the button i would have gone that's a different color let's see what it is these past two years have been two of the best years of my life oh, fuck, i want to thank my great co-hosts christian and erica for always being there and always making the episodes better and never making the podcast ever feel like a job without you two i wouldn't know what i'd be doing with my life in order to fill that deep, deep void left by Christian not loving me enough. <laughs> anyway, that's all I had to say. Thanks, everyone, and thanks to all the fans for the support. You're just as much a part of this as we are, and honestly, you're the coolest fans that I have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not lying, buddy. Ah! Hey, hey, it got both <laughs> your dumb asses. I put a little wheel on the end i'm not gonna lie i was like <laughs> there was still a little bit of like static in yeah. the background like room noise and i went to go look down and i went the light's still blinking and then you screamed <laughs> got your asses that's a classic deflection thing where you feel like you're being too open so you make a joke i hated it and here i was about to cry 
Well, good thing you didn't. Would have ruined your makeup. True. So you're welcome. But let's get into it. So. That was very beautiful, Joshua. That was very sweet. I meant all of it, especially hey. the last part. We really liked the you screen. Listening. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We each picked three of our favorite Reddit stories. Mm hmm. And then we each pick three of our favorite listeners submit stories. Now, we're not going to read 18 stories. That would be crazy. Absolutely nutty. However, considering we've already read them, what we will do is I'll go first. I'll read my top three Reddit stories titles, and then I'll read the one that I want to read. Okay. Fair enough. And then one of you will go. And then on the back half, we got the listener submissions. And I got a surprise for you fools again. What? Whoa. <laughs> I do need to let everybody know that I placed the cyan button where I did, hoping that at some point Christian will press it, <laughs> and then, therefore, we will get to experience the yell again. Yeah, and here's the problem. there's On the soundboard, there's no like backing out yeah. of it. You're well, stuck on you it. You can set it to an option to have it to do that, but I didn't. Oh. Are we recording? Yep. Oh, shit. Eight minutes in. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know why. I just was like, we weren't. Okay, so Josh, that's me if you're new here. Weird episode to start on. Go listen to the other <laughs> 103. I picked out three stories, and I'm going to read one of them. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think two of them you guys would have chosen. You think these are dark horses? Uh, one of them is definitely a dark horse. Okay. So I'm going to start with the dark horse. Am I the asshole for buying a dark horse? <laughs> Katy Perry style. You guys, really quick aside. <laughs> you met Juicy J? No. When I told you I went to that flea market yeah. last weekend, there was a life-sized stuffed horse for sale. Okay. But it wasn't like a real horse that was stuffed. Okay. It was like a toy horse that was stuffed, but it was a life-sized horse. Like human-sized or horse-sized? No, no, no. Horse-sized. Okay. How many hands are we talking about? A lot. 16-hand horse? What a, I don't know. Christian, you do know a little bit about everything, man. <laughs> Uh, can it I ask was a question? Disgusting. Did you, yes, did you get a price on it? Don't tell me the price. Okay. Do you know the price? Yes. Christian, over under eighteen hundred dollars. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Over. I'll go under. Sixty bucks. It's one hundred and fifty bucks. That's How? you buy it. Are you kidding me? No, dude. It was so gross, and the face was so scary looking. And it didn't come with the saddle or the reins or anything. It was just this giant stuffed horse. And like, yeah, how the fuck majestic. am I gonna get that home? You gotta go up there and kick the oh, wheel. Also, where are we gonna put it? Was right there. Yeah, it would have been great podcast studio. We would have moved <laughs> that horse. The chair. <laughs> we would have moved that horse. <laughs> Uh, you just get, did you ask him like you said the face was messed up yeah did you ask the guy like why the long face you know I made that joke. joke I liked it I did make that joke to my mom was she it made out of paper funny. mache or something how no, was it can so I take affordable it was like felt and like stuffing mm. how was it so affordable it was scary and it was like super old and like how do you clean that it was Stanley gross. steamer you steam it yeah I mean that's why they call it a flea market Sorry for that aside, but no, you're talking about horses. Wonderful. I just, just I'm fascinated. Honestly, yeah. we could just spend the whole episode talking about stuffed horses. <laughs> I'm so hungry I could stuff a horse. Ew. With my penis. <laughs> Not stuffing. Ew. I'm I mean, so hungry could I could about... fuck a horse. Ever heard that expression? No. Yeah. You've never heard that? You don't fuck... Hungry I could eat a horse. Why would you eat fuck, a horse? No, they're it, sentient beings. No, have you not? It's been I'm a vegan. thing ever since the Washington State horse incident. That's where everybody fucked a horse on the same day? <laughs> I don't know the name of the town. Hey, go Google Washington State horse incident. You didn't just make that up? No. You really do know a little bit about everything. He really does. He really does. I got my little Mr. Hands on everything, okay? Oh, <clears throat> now I get it. Speaking of Mr. Hands, this is from episode 76. This is a Christian sode. This story. So great one. This was, am I the asshole for bringing my poop gloves when I moved in with my girlfriend? <laughs> poop gloves. I forgot about this story completely. If you guys aren't aware because we don't talk about it, we have an Excel sheet with every single story we read, with every single link and everything, trying to track it all, the listener submissions, yada, yada, yada. And we were going through it looking for this. And I saw poop gloves and I was like, what a crazy fucking story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because almost similar to the shower socks. Yes. First right? thought is like, 
no. And then you're like, well, it's not the weird, like, it. I can see where you got there. Yeah. It's poop gloves less weird than a life-size stuffed horse. True. I would, I would say. Yes. I would say yes. So I really like Especially that if one. you have a second bathroom, then it's definitely normal. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go from not that weird to normal because you have 1.5 baths. I'm just saying, if you put them in your poop bathroom, you can just have the poop gloves in the poop bathroom on a high shelf, obviously. And then piss gloves in the piss bathroom. Well, if you want to hear the whole story, you can go to episode 76. <laughs> Great transition, Erica. And guess what? My s- number, uh, my s- other story, these aren't ranked in any particular order. Honestly, all I can't choose between my children. All... <laughs> However many we read were my favorite, except for whichever one Christian read on the last one. That one sucked. <laughs> episode 58, Erica's episode. Am I the asshole for refusing to apologize after throwing away my boyfriend's dinner after spitting in it? No, he's spitting it. Yeah. I'm reading that one. Really? Yes. I am not reading it. It was just one of my favorite ones. It's still made. Yeah, it's on the It's on my list. list. It's honorable mention. Right. However, the one I am reading. Is from episode 56. Another banger. Very early on in this year. That is it. It was a Josh episode, so you know it was good. (laughs) And this one's going to bring up some feelings. Uh, A lot of negative emotions. Uh We like to keep this podcast really (laughs) vibing and positive. So we're going to read a real negative story. R slash am I the asshole? Mm -hmm, Of course. For not letting a girl check my phone to make sure I wasn't taking pictures of her. Oh, Is this the one at the gym? Yeah. Yep. I fucking love this story. Not only because this was like probably one of the first ones that really blew us up on TikTok. I was say, this is like one of our big breaks. Mm-hmm. Like we were starting to blow up before it for sure. But this one, w- this one was posted on the same because this episode I did this and I get girl code or guy code, mm. and then Erica brought in the girl code, mm-hmm. and all of those TikToks just got they went straight off straight Dream Bro dudes pissed. Yeah. yeah, and it was our first like real delve into like I think that week we had like thirteen million combined TikTok views. And it's pretty crazy compared to like a month prior, we were not posting on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, let's get into it. I'm at the gym today and I'm. Nope, nope, nope. I'm at the gym today and I'm walking towards an empty squat rack. Ten foot in front of and one foot to the right of my rack is another rack that a girl. I just. okay, Like, I'm remembering (laughs) when we read this the first time. and I'm just like, that's so precise. Why? What? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Is it ten feet in front and one foot over? Yeah, they're not spaced very well. Yeah, it's a weird spacing. Is another act that a girl, Belinda, 20 female, is doing squats on. While walking up, I briefly notice that her leggings are see-through. And when she bends down in her squats, you can easily tell she's also not wearing underwear. That's not my business. That's her choice. Mm Mm-hmm. But it made me uncomfortable to take a rack it's, that was kind of behind her. It's crazy that the story should have just ended at that sentence. Yeah. It should have been, That was hey, the end of it. good on ya. I'm going to go do my set. Mm-hmm. I'd been waiting my entire gym session for one of these racks to open up, and this was my last lift before leaving, so I went ahead and took it. I went through my workout as normal. After every set, I check my phone for 5 to 20 seconds. I track every single set for every single lift in a spreadsheet to know how much I lift for and for how many reps. Who looks at their phone for 5 seconds, you fucking freak bitch 5 to 20 5 to 20 seconds Christian it's totally plausible maybe they're doing low low weight high rep 5 seconds is an insane like oh boy that was a rough 14 reps back, back in. into it <laughs> <laughs> we should know Christian's got he, Christian's goal was set to deadlift 2,000 pounds uh, yeah I'm almost there we're gym bros I'm on the cusp of 2,000 Sometimes I need to remind myself what I did last week to make sure I'm progressing. Sometimes I'm just checking the time. Sometimes I'm changing the song on my Spotify. Tonight, specifically, there's a very important basketball game being played. So I wanted to keep up with the score. And it was women's basketball. So he is. uh, Does he actually specify that? No, of course not. It was whatever the most misogynistic basketball game to watch is. Pacers and Heat. Yeah. Yeah, probably Pacers and Heat. 
one of them's from Indiana, so you know that's got to be in there. I think that's the Pacers, yeah. Yes. Correct. Arizona Heat? No. No, Miami Heat. Miami Heat. You were so close. Now, to be fair, Arizona is kind hot. of the it's Miami hot. of the West. Well, no, it's it's a dry heat, and so it makes sense. Miami famously dry, arid, no moisture at Miami. <laughs> so I use my phone a lot at the gym. I finished my third set when Belinda turns around and walks up to me with her phone up yelling, what the fuck are you doing? Fucking perv. Stop taking pictures of me. I'm caught completely off guard. But I explain that I'm just taking notes on what I'm lifting, that I'm not paying attention to her at all. She's being extra loud so other people are looking at me, plus she's recording me, and she demands I go through my pics and videos to show her what I was recording, and I delete the ones that I took of her. Now, that was a little bit of weird wording. She's saying, delete pictures that you took of me. Yeah. He's not saying, I took pictures of her. I went through and deleted the pictures. Right. Now, it is aggressive of her to come up in this manner. Can we agree on that? We can agree on that. But you have to be holding your phone so specifically to look like you're taking a picture. It's really hard to make it look like. Do you know how hard it is to sneak pics of Erica's feet? Yeah. I mean, she hasn't noticed yet, but... I'm building up a backlog for episode 104. I'm post. We're the cameras aren't recording. It's just going to be a foot montage from pinky toe to ring to middle to pointer toe to big. It's what the people want. It's, They're fat little sausages right now. It's uh, you know those picture. You know those like time lapses of like I took a picture of my daughter every day from when they were <laughs> zero gonna, to eighteen. It's gonna. <laughs> It's going to be your foot <laughs> over the course of your pregnancy. <laughs> oh, that's awful. All I hate it. Different angles, poor lighting, <laughs> zoomed in, fuzzy. Oh, I'm pissed. <laughs> Erica is too. Okay. So we can agree it was pretty aggressive for her to come up like that. I try to again explain I didn't record anything of her of her at all. She's yelling that if I have nothing to hide, I should have no problem showing her. So I insist on going to gym management. Also, I think at this point, fine. Yeah, that's reasonable to go. I don't, let's go get an interview. I don't think he's in the wrong here. It's like, hey, let's go to gym management. They can help us settle it. Yeah? Yeah. Now, he is a fucking weirdo for wording it in post of like, oh, she wasn't wearing underwear. I looked. That's fucking weird. Once at the front, we both explain our stories, and she's still recording. The normal gym attendees asks me if I'm willing to show her, a neutral third party, my pics and vids. She also says that I have nothing to hide, it's not a big deal, and we can squash it right now. I refuse. This is where he becomes suspect. It's just Yeah, it's just sus. Suspect. <laughs> well, suspect. 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 <laughs> <laughs> She's this already a mom, he, guys. He becomes among us. <laughs> I do. I have my own uncensored pics in there, plus those of my girlfriend. I'm not going to let anyone force me to show them for some bullshit. I do show her my spreadsheet, which shows it's been revised over 15 times in the past 50 minutes. So that proves what I was using my phone for. And this, Erica, is where you said, no, it doesn't. Because it doesn't. No. That does not prove. Look, here's how, here's the one app I used. Yeah. I stand by my sentiment. It doesn't prove that. It's evidence, I suppose. Sure. Shows that you weren't lying that you were using the app. I think the easiest... Here's it. He doesn't want to show pictures at all. I think as long as the last photo in your phone isn't a nude, open that one up and you can show them, like, here's the last photo I took and here's the date it was taken on. Yeah. It and should be an easy argument. Chances yeah. are the last one isn't it? But even if it is, that's you can communicate that to the person and say, hey, I have my own lewd pictures in here. I don't feel safe showing that to you guys. For As far as we know, he didn't say that. Yeah, That enough. was received well, but they still expected me to prove my innocence. I told them they need to review the cameras. Apparently, only the manager has access to them, so I was told he'd call me before the end of the night in about an hour. My girlfriend tells me I should have just let them look at my phone because she doesn't mind, and it would have cleared this all up. Makes it sound like they're going to go through his whole ass fucking camera roll, which right. again, it's just going to be the most recent one. Yeah, or like even the most like recent four or five. Yeah, but I mind. I get that someone wouldn't want someone taking pics of them, but violating my privacy to prove that I wasn't taking pics of you crosses a line for me. 
So that's the main meat and potatoes of the story. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of shit on TikTok. If you look at our TikTok for that, I pinned a comment that said, uh, this comment section does not pass the vibe check. That has like 10,000 likes or 12,000. It's not a lot. Compared to the one below it that calls us like idiots and that has like 128. I think it says like she was just asking for attention or something like that. And that's got like 128,000 likes on it. Yeah. Now... Do we need to clarify our stances anymore in that it should be easy fucking enough to, uh, you know, yeah, just prove like prove your innocence? If you didn't do it, prove yeah. it. And I get him wanting to protect his privacy, but then he should be, uh, uh, what's it, uh, uh, empathetic to her wanting her privacy protected by not yeah. having people take pictures of her. Listen, attention. also, like, if he's got a lewd photo, yeah, he can just be like, all right. I'm going to cover this lower half. Sure. It's my girlfriend's face. Or clearly it's not at the gym. Yeah. Like they can tell from the picture that it's not at the gym or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to do it. And he's, I feel like he's positing like, these are the reasons why I didn't and trying to posit as if like, oh, I didn't, I wouldn't want to show my girlfriend's body, even though she said it was okay. It's just, no, you were just being a fucking high on your ass, like, my rights, my rights, oh my God, my rights. Yeah, exactly. At a private establishment that you pay money to attend and they can revoke your status at any moment. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think that's right? I don't know. I think it's fine. Whatever. Now, we never read the edit on the podcast. And oh. people were pining for us to read the edit. So I guess this is like kind of a new little piece. Wow. Edit from the guy. Just talked to the manager. He checked the footage. He couldn't see what was on my screen in the footage. But he said it looks like I had my phone pointed towards the ground right in front of me the whole time. In his opinion, quote, not high enough to even take a pick of her and never angled in her direction. Apparently, I was going to get banned from the gym if she, if the cameras didn't absolve me. And also, I'm not the first person that has been accused by Brenda. Change the names. But she legit had a creeper before. So, there's a history at this gym of dudes being fucking weird. Mm-hmm. So, she might be a little bit more on edge because of that. Mm-hmm. But this is where Christian and I got real fucking heated. Every day we saw each other, we would talk about this. Have you ever looked at CCTV? Yeah. He didn't get absolved. He said, eh, mm-hmm. probably not. This fucker got like a not got like a a mistrial on a murder case, and he's like, "Hey, technically, I didn't do it." Then I yeah. was I wasn't convicted. I wasn't found guilty. I you wasn't know. found guilty. You know the four megapixel CCTV, er, yeah, er, yeah, TV cameras they use the fucking from the most insane angle from across the room. I'm sure there yeah. was a ton of evidence there. Erica, do you think he t- was taking pictures of her? <sighs> I don't know. Hmm. I would say probably not. I would say, I yeah, I'm going to say he wasn't, but he still was a creeper the whole time. He's still an asshole. He's still an asshole, for sure. But that's why I'm like not 100% sure that he didn't do like, it. Like, why would he get so defensive? Yeah. I, I, I think he's just a weird conservative if I had to he, a so stab at this. He later came in, because we can hit through real quick, because that went a bit longer than I was expecting. Uh, he went through comments because if you go through our tiktok comments there's a bunch of people like she was wearing see-through leggings ew she wasn't wearing underwear what the fuck none of those things matter listen i get it dudes on tiktok you've never seen somebody wear leggings or been around a girl or like somebody (laughs) wears leggings i get it black leggings when are stretched pull the fabric out and you can see through the fabric try it with your shirt you can see through your shirt a little bit more when you pull it and guess what a lot of women don't wear underwear to the gym because it fucking gets in the way and leaves panty lines and shit. It's no a thong, not that all women wear thongs, but a thong, a thin line of fabric resting on the asshole isn't going to stop any more fucking sweat getting onto the bench than not wearing it, you fucking weirdos. Mm-hmm. I, I hated that. of like, she was wearing see-through leggings and no underwear. She wanted people to look like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. It honestly just means you were looking to notice. It's yeah. like, how do, how does she want people to look? How do you know that she wants people to look? She's wearing black leggings. I don't... Yeah. How does that... Which is common calling gym attire. For like, and like... And hey, call me out if I'm wrong here. I just saw a TikTok about this kind of, where it's like... Or maybe it's Reddit, but it was like... 
it's natural to glance at things. If sure. you see somebody who you might deem to be attractive bend over or like they're wearing an, an attractive or like a tight fitting shirt or something, you're going to glance. But don't mm-hmm. fucking stare and be weird about it. And mm-hmm. to his accounts, he didn't. He noticed, which if mid squat, you might be able to see that's an ass cheek. She's alabaster white, but at least we don't have to get into it. I just that TikTok comment section made me so mad all the time. Yeah. Because it's very clear these dudes have never been around somebody who's worn leggings before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good story. Dudes suck. I really like the story because it's just a perfect example of like, hey, there's a real easy out to make you not the asshole. Is Belinda a little bit of the asshole? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, gives. I mean, she had a history of being, you know. Creeped on. Creeped on at that gym. So, but whatever. Ricky, what do you got on your list? Oh, are you ready for me? I can't wait to get more fucking comments, but then I can respond with my personal account and just yell at people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just respond with a video of me bench pressing 325 and then me talking over it. Okay. I'm going full toxic gym, bro. So I picked um, three that I really liked. The one that I'm reading, Josh, was was also on Josh's list. Um. The first one I picked was from episode 78 from r slash relationship advice. I don't remember who read it, um, but the title was husband has sexy photos of wife's best friend on his computer. I think that was a me story. I'm pretty sure I read that one. Probably. No, that sounds like a really good story. It's probably me that read it. Yeah. Because like, if you guys remember, the the story was like. She was a burlesque dancer and she was really down on her luck. And she was and so she needed insecure. validation, yeah. And I was just trying to like make sure she felt okay about herself. Okay. She was wearing see through burlesque clothes. <laughs> I hardly noticed. The next one I picked was from episode eighty five from R slash Am I the Asshole? Uh, the husband, lactose intolerant, orders an all dairy pizza on purpose so that his wife <clears throat> can take care of him. He would only order it on the day she had off. Uh huh. That sounds like a Christian story. <clears throat> I believe it was. I'm pretty sure I read it, actually. It was one of you two. It was definitely really? a coucher. I think I read that one. I think I read it. You guys move on to the next one. I'll look it up. How about that? Well, how about that? What episode number was it? I, I, I said I'll look it up is the thing. <laughs> then we've got... Um, do you remember what episode this was from? Yep, you I got it. it. You said it earlier, yep. but... Um, 58. From episode 58. Erica's story. You know it. I have the best ones. Uh, Am I the asshole for refusing to apologize for throwing away my dinner instead of letting my fiance have it? This this TikTok that we put up is another one that blew up for us. Granted, it was around the same time as the gym one. Yeah. People still like like it and stuff today. It still gets traction today. People like stitch it now. Like food channels steal our uh, audio without really uh, tagging us. Bastards and uh, just put it over their food because people love the story. So I much. thought we were just on jewelry. Thievery. No, we got food people stealing our stuff too. Oh hell yeah! All right, I female twenty two have been with my fiance male twenty for two years and recently got engaged. I handle cooking while he takes care of other stuff, including rent and utility. He's been eating a lot lately. I started cooking in large pots and buying extra ingredients. He usually tells me what he'd like to eat for dinner. Note, I only cook dinner three times a week. Other than that, we have plenty of leftovers. So on to the situation. Pretty sweet deal for her. Yeah. Cook three times a week, get rent and utilities paid. It's pretty nice. Deal with this asshole's fucking bullshit. Mm, Not worth it. I forgot about that part of the the bargain. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, last night I cooked dinner early because he wanted to eat early. I prepared his plate and put my plate in the fridge, ready to reheat for later. I was finished with studying and took a shower and then went into the kitchen to reheat my dinner and sat at the table by myself and began eating. My fiance came out of the bedroom saying he smelled the food while he was inside playing video games and thought of joining me because he was hungry. What a sweet, humble, what a nice partner. Hey, you did all the hard work. I'm going to come reap the benefits with you because I'm a nice guy. Without even asking, he put his hand on my plate wanting to eat from it. I stopped him and told him he was being selfish as he already had his dinner, a a larger portion of what I had cooked. Uh, The food on my plate was barely enough for me. He complained about being hungry from playing video games. It burns calories. 
You, you know how the, hard it is to do this? The brain's burning the calories. I told him I was hungry because of studying. Well, Brain no, burns. No, come on. That's easy. You don't even do this when you're studying. That's... <laughs> Well, you do th- you do this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Throw in the lick. Yeah, okay. Yeah. A lot of calories get burnt in making the moisture in your mouth. Also known as saliva. You have to tell me twice. He made a face and went to grab a spoon so we could eat together. I pulled my plate away and pointed at the fridge, telling him there was some leftovers in the fridge, and he could go ahead and reheat some if he was so hungry. Yeah. Fair request. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty fair. He refused and insisted to share my dinner. I stood my ground and didn't let him. He got all pissed, threw his spoon in the sink, and spit in my plate. Insane. What an insane reaction. Yeah. I haven't spit towards somebody since I was three. I was 100% taken by surprise and was so livid and disgusted. I shouted, what the fuck did you just do? He He smirked at me, telling me to enjoy as he walked out. I called him fucking childish, mm-hmm, and yeah. he turned around and walked back in saying I was the one acting like a high school bully for refusing to let him share my dinner and telling him to I just don't... have leftovers. This dude's never had a high school bully. He does, the, Bullying can be good sometimes, and he needed one. <laughs> what what movie and or show am I picturing in my head of like somebody hawking a loogie into the gravy of a, ah, waiting. They spit into somebody's mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm. I imagine that's what he did. Isn't that was... one of Ryan Reynolds' like first movies? Yeah, not it's pretty, first. It's pretty it? good. He said one of. I don't think it's even near the beginning of his career. It was still when he was solely a comedic actor, and he wasn't a heartthrob yet. It's got Luis Guzman, Andy Milanakis, Dane, Dane cook, cook playing a line cook. Justin Long. You know, I just saw a TikTok that he was kidnapped. Justin, Justin Long. Long. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he was kidding. He was in town for in a town for something. I don't remember. And uh, he was at like a local bar. Was this recent? A couple years ago. I oh, think. Uh, he's not currently missing. No, he's do not you, currently missing. Do you think he talks about it on his podcast? Did you guys know Justin Long his podcast? No, I didn't. But I didn't know he got fucking kidnapped either. And he like that's crazy. They were like taking him. I don't know where they were taking him, but uh, he like jumped out of a moving car going like forty five miles an hour. Wow. Yeah. I bet you wish you had a stunt double that day. (laughs) Good joke. I liked it. Is that like slowed down a little bit? Did you notice it sounded a little deeper than I programmed the board to slow it down by 1% every time you touch it? Okay. Did you really? No, No. of course not. (laughs) Anyways, I said that he was being selfish and petty to spit in my plate to stop me from eating it. I was so upset, I couldn't eat what was on my plate. It was gross and disgusting. To be fair, very effective method to get her to not eat it. Yeah. I threw it in the garbage can. Yeah, you should have. And he threw another fit, asking why I threw away perfect food, and he was counting on me giving it to him after he spit on it. We had a major fight, probably the biggest we've ever had. He thought, Rightfully so. Yeah, he, the thing is, he thought he outsmarted you by spitting on your food of like, now you have to give it to me. And then the option of her throwing it away it happened, and he was like, you challenged my intelligence yet again, wench. <laughs> I just want you to know that if you spit in my food, I'm going to spit in your face, and then I'm going to scrape off your spit, and I'm still going to eat it. That's kind of hot. I've had right? worse things <laughs> from your body in my mouth, so. Well, what's worse than spit? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Christian, how gross is everything else coming out of your body? I secrete a lot, Josh. He's Christ- a the, very sweaty man. The second dirtiest part of a human body, of Christian's body, is his mouth. The first is his urethra, where his cum comes come from. Uh-huh. Is that true? Yeah. The no. second, the first dirtiest place is your urethra? You know, it's sterile. It's, it's cum sterile. sterile? Comes definitely sterile. It's stored in the balls. So like just yeah, P is one ball and cum is the other. Yeah. Yep. He says I was wrong. <laughs> I escalated I escalated and he Incorrect. wants me to apologize first so we could put this past us. Oh but classic I said, manipulation. No way I'd apologize after he ruined my dinner and disregarded the time and uh time and effect. Effort probably. Oh. Time and effort I made to prepare it. 
classic manipulation of like, if you apologize, we'll move past it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All I'm asking for is your apology and then we're good. I'm Even over it. Even though I'm 100% in the wrong here. This dude's awesome. No, how do not. how do people sucks. like this find partners to exploit? It just yeah. boggles my mind. Because there's no, obviously abusive relationships. Blah, 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 blah. There's no way this dude just one day was like, I'm spitting in food. There had to have been a buildup of uh, bad character. You don't traits. get it, Josh. He had a bad league match, okay? His League of Legends his, was going poor. Yeah, his bot was feeding. Yeah, that makes sense. Top lane. So, oh, we need to check the time of this post. This may have been the day that Ninja tweeted about his wife bringing him a sandwich while playing League of Legends. Didn't ask for it, by the way. Topless. Topless. Or is it Brawless? Brawless. It's not even topless. It's Brawless. With a side of chips. And then he's like, my lady needs to bring me a second plate of food. He was trying to one-up Ninja. He just got absolutely pwned in the Fortnite. Well, he was playing League of Legends. I changed it to Fortnite <laughs> so he could be playing with Ninja. Fortnite Ninja was playing League of Legends. No, back then in he the was tweet. In the tweet, he said oh, I was fuck. playing oh, LOL. Oh fuck. Yeah. Oh, fuck. How do you not have that tweet memorized, you fool? <laughs> <laughs> you you're a loser for I'm, not memorizing the tweet. <laughs> I'm a little upset and I might be <laughs> leaving fool. the podcast. You don't <laughs> You don't have all of Ninja the Blevins, Tyler? Tweets memorized? No, I don't. You know how the the Library of Congress has all tweets marked from up until like 2017, and then they realize, hey guys, this isn't doing it. This has been taking over the slack since 2017. Damn, you got the Library of Congress up there? Sheesh. I feel like that's your that's your brain. Except I don't know how to read a book. Here's my picks, guys. I'm shaking, shitting, crying, pissing, farting, and coming myself. That's the correct emotions to have with my picks. Okay. First, I do want to say, normally very big <laughs> supporter of the boyfriend tax, but he had already gotten his tax. He had a whole ass plate. Yeah. I do argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the idea? Do you not like taxation? No. I do not. Oh, well, cancel her, folks. What are you going to say? Oh, I hate it when you try to take food off my plate. Boyfriend yeah. tax. I uh, understand, and I do it to him. Now he's getting husband tax and dad tax? He's going to be fucking raking it over there. It's going to it, be a serfdom pretty soon. It happened live on stream one time. You took oh, a boyfriend yes. tax on stream? When n n Yeah. Remember when Aurora made spaghetti and I had a plate of it, and he was like, can you I try the a Taco Bell wings. spaghetti? Oh, yeah. And I was like, fuck, no, you I, can't have my spaghetti. I literally wanted a single bite, and she would not let me have any of it. And then she's like, you want me to go, you, go get you some? It's like, no, I just needed a single bite. I just wanted to see really if it tasted good, good or not. That's all I wanted. take food from a pregnant lady. You weren't even that pregnant then. <laughs> You're hardly pregnant you then. You still first try. Come on. You would have thrown it up in 15 minutes. My first pick is... <laughs> Today I fucked up by shitting in my girlfriend's pants from episode 66. <laughs> oh, I, I remember don't re this. I don't remember they that. They were camping. They were camping out in Australia. <sighs> and Australia like, in the outback. He I ate like seven-day-old potato salad. Uh -huh. After she told him not to. Everyone says potato salad's like a fine wine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 85 was Christian's episode. Was it? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know. Correct. <laughs> what, was, what was this one? What uh, episode? Episode 66. It sounds like a me. That was a you story. This was a me story. I think it was all. It was, it was titled Onoravirus because ah, that's where I said Onoravirus. Me story, but it, I definitely read it. It was a Christian story. <sighs> I'm pretty sure that entire episode was poop stories. It was. And Erica, <laughs> you're, there's two other hosts. Yeah, but I'm the best one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't read all the stories. Is Number what I'm two on the list. This one made a big impact in our lives for a minute. I feel like. And it was the murder boner story. Oh, I almost picked that one. Episode 74. I re-listened to 74 before we had Emo Joe on, and that was such a good story. That was my yes. That was a you story. Yes. That was a very good story. Yes, it was. That was so good. Egg-shaped penis lives in my brain. Rent free. <laughs> <laughs> and then for my pick that I'm going to read, it was, am I the asshole for not wanting to participate in my friend's ketchup scheme? You're reading this oh. one? Yes. Wow. I can hot take not for me. 
Really? You didn't like yeah. that story? It was mid to me. Really? Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. But this was post the listener this submission was, for this Chup. This was post Chup. I hold more in my heart for the listener submitted Chup story than the this Chup. one. Yeah. Yeah. I th- hey, pick a different story, fucker. I think this is a better story than the original Chup story, but the original Chup, you know, started. Yeah. The, you know the whole trend. because of my on the fly improv coming up with the word Chup. No. He wrote it in the story as Chup. Uh, they did, and it was off yeah. the Instagram because I read it. No. Yeah. Hey, p- pull it up then. Hey, yeah, pull it up. Let's see. Well, here's the problem. I Play accidentally it back. deleted it. Oh. Oh, but in post, I edited it for somebody. It made it sound like you said Chup first. You dubbed over it. So am I the asshole for yes. not participating in my friend's <laughs> scheme to convince restaurants to buy his ketchup? My friend Zoltar has been obsessed with ketchup ever since I met him. Why Zoltar? I fucking forgot the name was Zoltar. All right. I hope that's his real name. <laughs> that's very funny because there is parentheses fake name. Oh. I've never seen someone <laughs> have to go, this is a fake name. <laughs> Not an obviously <laughs> fake name. My friend Optimus Omega Prime. <laughs> fake name. Optimus Prime's middle name is Omega? It is now. <laughs> He's been obsessed with ketchup ever since I met him. He is always trying out different recipes to make his own ketchup and getting me and all of our friends to try them. Recently, he made his best ketchup yet. And I tried it, and it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was ketchup. It's really sad. If it's his best ketchup and it was just ketchup, that's pretty sad. It's sad that, yeah, like... At least the tunnel guy's tunnel's good, and the, yeah. the ketchup guy's ketchup's just mid. Mid. Mid ketchup worse than bad ketchup. Yes, Can I say 100%. that? I'd rather have a bad chup than a mid chup. Yeah. Now he's decided he is finally going to break into the ketchup game. Absolutely bonkers that he thought that was a possibility. He's convinced he's going to launch his own ketchup company. I'm going to break into the personal computer game in 30 years. So yeah. I'll let you know how it goes. He's going to make his own ketchup company and grow it to be one of the top providers of ketchup in the U.S. He literally has a photo of Heinz ketchup on a dartboard, which he throws darts at and mutters things like, I'm coming for you. That's awesome. That's honestly That's dedication. Like, that is commitment to a bit that I can re- uh, respect. Have you guys seen? Do you think it's a bit for him, though? A bit. Have yeah. you guys seen the TikTok where it's like, be unreasonable with your goals or whatever. There is a big thing. Or be delusional, I think is what they're saying in like the an, TikToks. Is like an alpha male like strategy? I don't even know if it's alpha male, but it's just like always set your goals way too high that way. It's like even if you go halfway, now you did something. But this reminds me of that the like the dedication to have like you know he's got like a dream board up on one wall, he's got the dartboard on the other wall. To take the goal of taking down Heinz is insane. Absolutely bonkers. I mean, like you're saying, like I guess, like if you want to be president, you have to beat the president. So, like, I get it. Anyways, he has a scheme that he wants me and our other friends to participate in. Essentially, it involves all of us going to a restaurant, sitting at different tables, and enacting lines from a scene he wrote that will culminate in all of us trying and loving his ketchup. And then convincing the manager of the restaurant to buy it. This dude read a Nicholas Sparks novel and said, yep, this will happen. His no- what? The Lovely Bones. That's not Nicholas Sparks. He wants us all to memorize the lines. What? The gist of it is one guy is supposed to call over a waitress and say he likes the French fries, but really hates the ketchup. And I'm supposed to lean over from another table and say, sorry to bother you. <laughs> But uh, I have to agree, okay? <laughs> I'm tired of this old-fashioned factory-produced ketchup. Where's the real tomato flavor at? I still stay by my stance. If ketchup tastes like tomato, it's, it's bad. dog. Yeah. After a few other people do this, my friend is going to say, you guys won't believe this, but I'm a ketchup chef. And I have a few samples. Of course we Would won't believe it. Would you guys want to try it? That's not a profession. <laughs> You guys won't believe this. I'm a clown shoe sniffer as a job. <laughs> yeah, I get paid Gross. to sniff size 47s. You won't believe it. I don't. I, that's, I'm also a, a, a future person seeker. Here's how. Do Medium. You, that's why his ketchup's mid. 
Do you think clown shoes are actually size 47 or is it because the like toe section of it, the toe box of the, the clown shoe is so large that you think it's a bigger size than it actually is? I hate is it you, like a size 16? Hey, I hate that you know that the phrase, the term is toe box. At this point, everyone is supposed <laughs> to try catch up and act <laughs> astounded by it and basically all exclaim that this is the best chip they've ever had and I'm supposed to stand up on top of my table, make a trumpet noise, and then yell to the entire restaurant. The trumpet noise. Oh, insane. we have the best ketchup ever made over here. <laughs> Come on, everybody. <laughs> what are the, what are other patrons supposed to do? Hobble over with one French fry to see? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just dip you, it in the community ketchup bowl. While he's doing the whole trumpet routine. Burp, 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 burp. Ketchup Chef is actually setting up a small free sample booth, okay? It's like when, when the uh, Mexican restaurants make fresh guacamole at your table side. Mm. That's, that would actually be pretty rad. Though. That would be cool to have in a, a, yeah, like a dining experience where they make fresh chop. One of the other people in the group is now supposed to go get the manager of the place, bring him over, and we're all supposed to try to convince him or her to buy an order of my friend's ketchup. Mr. Manager, Mr. Manager, please buy our ketchup. He's my, Zoltar is then going to act surprised and very embarrassed and try to tell us, stop, stop, stop. Stop putting this poor guy on the spot like this in regards to the manager. <laughs> he then assumes he will make a huge sale, and then he wants us to do the same operation at all the other places in town. I had to tell him that there's no way I'm doing this. I hate public speaking, acting, and having intention focused on me at all. Also, the idea is just so fucking dumb and crazy to me. <laughs> and saying that you let your friend get all the way through that entire plan and then say, hang and then on. Then you stopped him. I don't like public speaking. <laughs> Step one would have been bad for me. <laughs> I'm there if I just kind of have to do the trumpet noise. <laughs> but the public speaking thing, it's not happening. You, you ever hear Jason Derulo's song, That Was Me? <laughs> I was the one swinging low. I told him I told him this straight up. He acted offended and said, I'm ruining his dreams. I'm astounded by this, but some of my friends agree and think that he's showing a hustle. He's got that Sigma grind set. And then we should all be helping him to launch his ketchup business. Aside from his ketchup obsession, Zoltar is one of my best friends. But now it seems our friendship is being ruined. Yeah. A lot of people are telling me I'm a jerk for not going for going against his dreams and not helping him out. So am I the asshole? You said ruined correctly. I'm proud of you. I did it for you, Erica. I I think I switched my stance on this. Do it. Do it. Yeah, be a good friend. Here's the problem. All of it? <laughs> yes. I th- I think the biggest problem comes from the fact that you're the best friend and you have a very pivotal role in yeah. this whole... You have to s- lead by example. Yeah. If you were a less good friend, you could have just been one of the people that were like, oh, the sketchup is pretty good. And that would have been your only speaking role. Mm-hmm. That would have been money. I would I would go help a friend do that. All the time. I would love to see four 17-year-old boys all sitting individually in a restaurant in different spots at tables like this, not knowing how to act like, yes, one bottle of ketchup with your freshest of french fries, please. Wow, this sucks ass, man. (laughs) (laughs) Frick, if only there was W ketchup around for me to try. This ketchup's L plush white plus bad (laughs) plus Plus ratio ratio. plus see you on the other side of this break bye you guys didn't want to know my opinions about the story where you didn't look like you had any 50 minutes i did but it's fine and we're back from the break erica what are your thoughts on that chup store e E. (laughs) a games i feel like uh everyone needs the friend that's going to be honest with them and tell them the truth and I feel like that the ketchup's very good. Yeah, the that's not what I'm saying about. I'm saying that he. I don't think he was in the wrong to say, "Hey, this is stupid. This is not the right plan." So you're down for crushing a man's dreams? I am not down for crushing a man's dreams. I'm saying that I'll you wanted that guy to stop digging the tunnel too. Hmm. This is all because it gave up. me serial killer vibes. But 
I think that it was appropriate for him to say like, hey, I don't think that this is the right way to go about it. Yeah. Did he go a little overboard being like, this is fucking stupid? Yeah, that's rude. And I wouldn't say that. But yeah, I would say it's dumb as shit. I would say like, it's absolutely this, dumb this is shit. not this is not the route. Let's brainstorm and let me help you figure something else out instead, because I don't want to do this. And I don't want to do another break. Bye. Bye. <laughs> This is going to be a long episode, boys. Yeah, and welcome back to this side of the break. We're going fast on this side of the episode because Daddy oh can't have another two hour and 30 minute, 13 minute podcast episode. It ruins the numbers. It did fuck the numbers. And speaking of numbers, I crunched some numbers. Oh, yeah? For this week's Circle, Circle Turds. That's right. That is really I funny. sent you guys a little text message because, of course, this year we have been tracking poops, BM okay. movements. And oh, for no. the year one review, I did A, B, sheesh. Because around year one, babies start to learn how to do their ABCs. Year two, you know what they're doing? Potty training. And every judgy poops. Now, was Those I planning on rewriting a fun little story for every judgy poops and making it real cool and fun? Yeah. And then guess what? I got off work today and my fucking internet was down. So all I had was a calculator, some time, and maths to do. Okay. So here it is. I went through and totaled the amount of poops we've taken up until May 1st. Okay. So okay. the first four months, one third of the year. I no longer want to hear this number. <laughs> and I extrapolated some data. And I think it's interesting Fucking because nerd, am I right? one of the reasons why I love math. Nerd. <laughs> and one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because we're going to be bulk recording because of baby so you guys aren't going to get our poop numbers on time in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want you guys to miss out. So I want you guys to know what to expect from our assholes. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really kind of you. Yeah. So Erica, your months went five, six, eight, nine in poops from January to April. Moving on up in the world, baby. Bowel moving on up. That's an average of 0.233 repeating poops per day. Or one poop every four point th two three. Okay. Yep. Or one poop every four point three days. Okay. Or every one hundred and three hours, you're pushing something brown out. Okay. Okay. On average. Sounds about right. So every four point two nine days. Okay. I am at a gentlemanly's point eight six repeating poops per day, or one poop every one point one five days, or every twenty seven hours. Now this not, is weird. Now not just twenty seven hours, every twenty seven point six hours, and of course my birthday is on six point twenty seven. Little strange. You know, if it was in Europe, twenty seven poops per month. If it was in Europe, uh, your birthday would be on twenty seven point six. My poops were twenty seven, twenty three, twenty seven, twenty seven. I don't like that you're giving me a little bit of a complex here. I'm feeling a little bit like Jim Carrey in the movie 23 with your bowel movements. Speaking <laughs> of 23 bowel movements, that's a Tuesday for this guy. <laughs> Christian, 98, 75, oh 81, 83. What was the first month? 98. Oh, fuck. That was a lot of poops. <laughs> yeah. I that was January. That was our first month doing it. And I think after doing that, I was like, I got to rein this in a little bit. <laughs> I became a little too conscious you of became, how many yeah, poops you I was became taking. conscious of when you were going. That's 2.81 poops a day. Do you think that's why I'm pooping more? Because I'm more conscious of it? Probably. Maybe. And I haven't changed anything because I'm perfectly satisfied with my shits. Okay. So Christian's at 2.81 poops per day. It's actually 2.8083 repeating poops per day. That's my birthday. No, it's not. <laughs> Or one poop every third of a day, or one poop every eight hours. That sounds extremely accurate. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty funny to me. Every, three a day, almost. So the ratio for every one poop Erica takes, I take 3.7, and Christian takes 12. That feels accurate. <laughs> Isn't that insane if you put it like that? <laughs> and then I just extrapolated some data, of course, so projected this year, in case we don't get to the numbers, you on know, time. For the year, Erica is expected to take about seven poops a month, 85 poops, and you're going to spend about 14 hours of your year pooping. Okay. 
but based off of the rough estimate that you said it takes per shit. I don't think I want to hear my number. <laughs> I, I want to hear his this number. This year, 316 poops, about 27 a month. And I'm going to spend about 16 hours of pooping. Now, if you'll notice, I am pooping about 230 times more than Erica, and I'm only losing two hours more. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Do you want to, do we want to divulge what we estimated our times at? I don't care. I calculated Erica's at 10 minutes of shit. About, Christ, yeah. Christian said 5 to 15, so I did it at 8. I yeah, I would say my my actual shit was probably Lower. maybe 5 minutes, but I always get distracted by TikTok. So such. I did it at 8 minutes and I did mine at 3. I'm normally in and out in about 3. That's very impressive. I get bored on there. I can go look at my phone in the kitchen. Not on the toilet. All right. Now, Christian. This dude wants to hold his phone while he pisses, but can't yeah. do it while shitting. He wants to eat while he's shitting, but, you know, let's... That's I... another day. Uh, Christian, you were about 85 a month, or 1,025 poops in a year, or about 166 hours of poop. 166 <laughs> hours! <laughs> 10 times more than me, roughly. That is so much time. <laughs> no, I didn't stop there, because why would I? Uh, Don't let's tell do some, me lifetime. Let's do some lifetime I estimates. Might, let's just do I some might li- fucking end myself. Let's just do some <laughs> lifetime estimates, okay? The channel, not um, how long you'll live. So to date, granted this isn't going to be accurate because babies poop more. We all have different diets, yada, yada, yada. I feel like my poop schedule has been pretty solid like since I was a kid, though. I've honestly probably pooped 27 times a month since. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> probably since I was conceived. Since year one? I don't know. So, obviously, this isn't going to be perfect, but the longer you go, the more it'll average out, right? So, to date, you, Erica, 27 years young. I am 27 years young. Christian, 29 years oh, old. Oh, no. Let's not expose me like that. So, I went back how many days since our birthdays, multiplied that by how many poops per day, Okay. and then calculated some time. Erica, to date, you have taken 2,369 shits. In Insane. my lifetime? Yeah. You're only at 2,000? Christian hits that in two and a quarter years. (laughs) And you're pooping more because of the baby. That's that's Mm -hmm. in there. Or about 16 and a half days of your life in shit. Only 16? (laughs) I had like 16 (laughs) days in the one year. No, you had 166 hours, so... 10 days. (laughs) I mean, nah, it was like eight days maybe. Half of (laughs) half. Uh, I have shat roughly 8,830 times in my lifetime, or about 18 and a half days of pooping. Again, I've shit 6,000 more times than Erica and only lost two days for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was tenfold. And Christian. <laughs> Christian be shitting. 29999 nine, nine, nine shits. 29,999 shits. 29,000? 29, and we don't have to say why, but. Nine nine nine, nine. Also weird coincidence. We don't have to say why. Christian's social That's security my number. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird coincidence that like my birthday and my social security or a hundred and sixty-seven days of pooping that you've spent in your life so far. Half a year, half a calendar. Almost. That feels right. Almost. You know what? Yeah. A quick. A quick. Would you rather? Okay. You spend. A hundred days. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to do is just one hundred days of constant shitting, mm-hmm. and then you never have to shit again in your life. A hundred days is a long time, Erica. Yes. Yeah, but you never have to shit again ever. I, the thing is, I'm not. My life isn't negatively dictated by shitting, so I probably wouldn't take that. Okay. Like I, my life isn't affected that much by shitting. Aurora might take that. I might take that. I. Would take that because that's one summer vacation. <laughs> Everyone knows there's a hundred f- poop time off. You got. <laughs> Everyone knows there's a hundred and four days in summer vacation. Okay. Thank you, Phineas and Ferb. I thought it was two hundred and fifty six days of summer. What's the movie? Five hundred days of summer. Whatever, man. I don't fucking watch that Dip shit. Shit. It's a good movie. You should watch it though. Classic Black Pill movie. And how about we do laugh t- li- laugh time? Uh huh. That's where. <laughs> that's, thank you. And now, how about we do lifetime? No. I just use the average American lifespan of seventy nine for all three of us. Okay. 
I didn't like how we're over a third of the way to that. I don't want to talk about that, but can we also talk about how I'm more likely to live longer than the two of you? Yeah. Did you take that into account? No, I just put 79. <sighs> because I didn't want... My internet was Did down. Did you take into consideration that I have a mindset that will push me past 79 years? I mean, being taller makes you live less, though. Did you take into consideration that I'm hoping to die before Christian? Yes, actually. Yeah. That's why I put 79 years. You're going to die at 79 years. You're going to die at 79 years in one day. Okay. That one extra day gives Christian 2,000 more shits. And you better not find another wife in that one day. <laughs> <laughs> you might find another wipe because Christian in his lifetime. He will be shitting. Do, do you want to start with Christian, Erica, or me? We've done Erica, me, then Christian. We can start with me. Well, Wait, just... didn't you already do lifetime numbers? No, that was from birth to now. Oh. This is from birth to death. Do us shart. Oh. Yeah. I'll eclipse all your guys' number with no shame. Erica, 6,728 shits, which is less than me that I've taken so far. In my was, entire lifetime, only 6,000 shits? five times less than I've taken to this point. <laughs> 47 days of pooping. Listen, if I, uh, that's what I'm saying. If I could get all of my shits out in 100 hours, in 47 days, and then I never shit again in my whole life, I would do it. I would do that. Just take like maternity leave for your asshole. Fuck it. I will quit my job and poop for 49 days, and then I'll go find a new job. <laughs> and then I'll tell them, hey, you know why you should hire me? No bathroom breaks. No bathroom breaks. I'm, I'm just pissing. Fuck it. I'll wear a diaper and piss my pants. I will be the... Clip that, be an clip that right now. <laughs> Put that on TikTok, Winter. You got it. Uh, Josh will be 24,990 shits or 52 days of shitting. You're almost caught up to me. I'm only losing five. It's insane that I'm only losing five more days in there. This <laughs> feels like, you know, like the, the million billion issue that goes on in your brain where yeah. like, it's yeah. the same number and then you see them next to each other and you're like, oh, uh-oh. I'm having that sensation with my numbers every time you say it. Christian, 80,978. I would have thought it was more. Or 450 days of pooping. A year and a quarter of shitting. Would you That's give a up a year of your life pooping? No. No. <laughs> but what if it's when you're a baby? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, it. If I could opt in early, yes. I will say what I wanted to do, what my goal was to do was first originally do an everybody poops or every judgy poops thing. But the book, everybody poops. Have you read it? No. Mainly pictures first off, but also it's just like it's a just giraffe poops, shits. a camel poops, a one humped camel poops, a one humped poop. Just kidding. It's a bad book. You can't really riff off that. Okay. I could have. And then I decided in my little brain, I was like, I'll go through my favorite circle jerges, unbeknownst to you fools. And my favorite one, Christian, I have to say, is your podcast spinoff ideas. And I was going to produce an episode of talking to myself and cut <laughs> little clips of you talking to yourself. <laughs> that would have taken so much work. I was planning on doing it. And then my little internet was out because Comcast has a monopoly on the area and they suck ass. They do. This is actually factual. My favorite circle judge is your haikus. The haikus were pretty good. That was season one. I don't care. It was still my favorite. I do have fun with all the podcast spinoffs. You do. Now let's get into listener submissions. I'm just going to read it. We don't have to go through our top three because all of our top three are the same. And we're yeah. going to read them all. Okay. I am going to read a listener submission that we got very early on. Which one? Was it season one, Joshua? No, season two, of course. Of course, because we totally talked about that. It definitely Heavily wasn't implied. just implied. Heavily implied. Heavily implied. Am I the asshole for not paying for my oldest daughter's wedding dress? Oh, a classic. A classic, classic story. Didn't we just talk about this again like not that long ago, too? We were on Kip's stream. Hey, hey Kip. Uh, hey, Kip. H-E-Y-K-I-P-P. -P. And I read an update on there to this story that has never been read anywhere else. So go over to that VOD. I don't know what day it was. Figure it out. Last if Thursday. If you want to go listen to it. Last Thursday. Today is the 20th. So uh, 13, go check out 12th, the 12th. Thursday. We were on there for a charity stream. Am I the asshole for not paying for my oldest daughter's wedding dress? Yes. Hi, judges. Hello. I am a 54-year-old mom of four. Are you, though? Allegedly. Heavily implied on the allegedly. 
sneak peek behind the curtains. We've gotten multiple emails from this listener and they've been a different person each time. My youngest daughter and oldest daughter announced their weddings not too far apart. My youngest, who is 21, is getting married next month. And my oldest is getting married in October of 2022. My oldest daughter, who is 26, plans way ahead of time because she likes to have total control of big situations. Completely normal. My youngest daughter is my best friend in shadow. Completely normal for a parent to have a favorite child. I mean, I'm my mom's favorite. But does she say that? I'm your mom's favorite. We shouldn't be saying this live on the airwaves. She has been planning her wedding for only three months prior to the wedding date. I recently paid for her dress, which was a whopping 10,000 groans. That's bones and grand. She looks, That's what it feels like when you spend that much money. Yeah. She, she looks so beautiful like Cinderella, the most beautiful of princesses. My eldest daughter looked like Snow White, the Barf. worst of the princesses. My oldest daughter was ecstatic, actually, not Snow White. She asked when I was available to go dress hunting with her, to which I gave her my full availability for the next few months. Then she asked what my budget was. I laughed and said, whatever you're comfortable spending, you're the one that has to save for it. She seemed shocked by this answer and asked why I would pay for my youngest daughter's dress and not hers. I explained, it's not that I don't love her. I just don't love you as much. And it's not a problem with money. But her wedding is much smaller, more exclusive, and that my priority is with my little girl right now because I'm paying for her entire wedding. Fucking asshole. I just, every time I read this, the qualifier of it's not that I don't love her or money, but a fucking insane qualifier. She began crying. And stormed out of my house, leaving her fiancé with her dad and I. Suddenly, I've become the bad guy, as I am now being berated by my husband and my oldest daughter's fiancé. You said you couldn't pay for anyone's wedding. Why are you playing favorites? Well, I only see my oldest daughter once a week. I barely know the woman. Insane. No, that's 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 an insane sentiment. I see you once a week, and I know you better than the back of my hand. Yeah. Ah! Oh, classic joke. Okay. You're so annoying. Please, Christian, save me, 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 save me. Good joke. Thank you. I liked it. Thank you, Emo Joseph. She has her own life and family, but my youngest baby still lives with me and does everything with me. My husband says I never give the opportunity to my eldest daughter, but why would I when my best friend is already living with me? Seems unfair that they expect me to pay for both my girls' weddings. My youngest baby is having a huge wedding and it needs to be perfect. She's letting me have full creative freedom and I don't get to have that with my oldest. It always seems fair in my mind and besides my oldest daughter has always been very independent. Am I the axe goal? Yes. I love that story. Absolute insane parent. I love the update too where she's like, "Mm, my life is in shambles. Yes. Go check out the update on Hey Kips Bods on Twitch. I I, I love that story. Mm -hmm. It's such a good story. That's that's the first time we had a listener submission where we went off and then we stopped and went, oopsies, this was a listener. And And then then we went off again. Yeah. Like that. (laughs) Are there worst moms, worst moms in the world? Absolutely. But Mandy, you suck. There's not worst moms that ran into the judges. True. Yeah. And speaking of worst people who have written into the judges. Erica, you want to read or you want me to go? What are we who do you think I just led into, Christian, by saying worse people who have written into the judges? Out of the two stories we have left. <laughs> got his ass. Well, if I just got up and left right now, just mission accomplished. We'll get him next time. Today I fucked up. I peed in my pants at work. Oh. <laughs> Curveball. Where I work, there are several bathrooms throughout the facility. Some are more secluded than others, so I tend to use those whenever possible. However, due to COVID, part of our facility has been closed, leaving a perfectly secluded bathroom I've never tried before. Can I just say, you must be a big old fat dumb idiot if you try to use a secluded bathroom. Why? Why would you not try? Just the stupidest little fucking minuscule, small, short, N- no, this dumb, feels... weak. Why would you not use a bathroom that's away from everybody so no one can hear your thunderous shits? 
continue. You want to al? It's like when you sneeze real loud as a dad. You want to alpha shit. You need to shit so loud everybody hears that you're shit, and then not be embarrassed about it. It's how you command a room. I couldn't help but daydream of all of the undisturbed movements I could have there. Who knows? Maybe I could even have a roof toilet epiphany moment, a la Scrubs. Scrubs reference? I know that one. Now, I won't lie. I was downright giddy walking down this dark corridor. I'm about to be downright shitty. Would you shut up and let me read? I love this story so much. (laughs) Who knows what fortunes this secret new toilet may bring to my life? In all my eagerness, I dropped trow and began my business, realizing seconds in that I had forgotten to lock the door. Mistake. Amateur move. Absolutely amateur move. Only an idiot. Absolute dumbass. <laughs> After years of using my favorite toilet at work, I had formed a muscle memory when I didn't even have to think about locking the door. At that moment, the worst... Honest mistake, honestly. I I feel like I can form a muscle memory where I don't even have to pay attention to locking the door. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. Sometimes I lock the door accidentally because my muscle memory is to lock Sometimes the door. when you're shitting 80,000 times in your life... <laughs> You kind of just get a muscle. Hypothetically, memory. hypothetically, guys, it's been a hundred one week since you talked to me. It's been two years, and they still talk over me. I can't even get through this story. You talk over me too. I would never. At this Sometimes. moment, there are interjections. <laughs> it's the magic. <laughs> you don't gotta be so rude, man. Don't you know she's human too? <laughs> when does this stop being funny? Because two years and it's still it's still got juice for me. This is a little postmodern humor for us. I know our listeners don't box. like it. I know Erica doesn't like it, but me and Christian, this is literally what we come here to do is piss you off mm-hmm. and take pictures of your feet. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I hear squeaky shoes coming down the hall. Did someone else share dreams of what... <laughs> This toilet could bring to their life. In a panic, I stop midstream and stand up, pants still around my ankles, waddling the two steps needed to reach the lock, breathing a sigh of relief, ready to get back to my business. However, it turns out I didn't have the pelvic floor muscle control I thought I had. Honest mistake. A lot of pe- That happens to a lot of people. And I had peed right into my pants. <laughs> this is so funny. To make matters worse, I was wearing khaki pants making these wet marks undeniable. Mm -hmm. I spent the next 15 minutes standing bottomless in this bathroom, trying to dry the wet spots as best as I could. After all this, like a fool, I decided to try try to finish my business, resulting in what could only be described as a cherry on top of this turmoil I was forced to go through. There was no Wi-Fi or cell service in this part of the building, leaving me with nothing to do but reflect on what had just happened to me. That's pretty funny. At the end of the day, this toilet was supposed to bring me joy and give me a minute to solve all the world's problems, but left me with nothing but heartbreak and pissy pants. Sad face. This The thing about this story is it's so well written. It's the vocabulary, so well written. There's like, some spelling errors, but this is originally read it. by Christian in episode eighty five, and I love it. There's there's twists within the story. Mm-hmm. There's nice little spots where everybody can relate. And at first, I was about to interject here as well, and I was going to say it's not that big of a deal. You don't have Wi Fi, but then yeah, to sit there and stare at your piss stained khakis they had now been dried, but you could still tell that there was a piss stain there. How would you know that? Spoiler! I, Spoiler! It's Christian! That's history! What? He wrote it in! Christian I, wrote it in. That's how I was being rough on the writer. I've never pissed in my pants at work. That's also a, one of the worst parts is this happened at work. Yeah. Where I had to see people afterwards. You couldn't, like... How, was there ever a thought of, like, texting your sister to come bring you a spare pair? There was no cell service. <gasps> yeah. I, oh, I literally God. sat there and I was like, this is the worst. And I started typing up the story. <laughs> that's so funny man. also his sister's not gonna have a spare pair of pants for him yeah, bring me scrubs home. she lives an hour half hour away <laughs> now this brings me erica a little, quick little piece of vitriol i have towards you towards me yeah <gasps> absolutely what you sent <laughs> 
what? What I do? <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing a southern accent. What? Little old me? Yeah. <laughs> little old me? <laughs> yes, little old you. You sent me a TikTok that went pretty viral. Of it was an alpha male dude explaining how to clean up piss. Oh after. yeah, and cis women were having a field day with it. They were like, "Dudes don't know how to clean off their dick to prevent uh, pee in their underwear and stains." Can I say something? No. Can I be honest with you? No. My dick doesn't hold a tablespoon of urine on the end of it. It comes from inside the house. You can't just wipe off the tip and then not get a pee, a pee stain every now and then. You shake to get off the tip. Yeah. But when you unkink the hose and put it back on the reel, a little bit comes out and then it comes through your khakis and it's brown. There's my. Your there's pee my. is brown? The khakis the are khaki, extra the khaki, brown. The khakis. The khakis. Okay, because if your pee is brown, then that's an issue and no, we need to go still, to the doctor. It's still black. I'm hydrated. It's still black. Here's my three stories, guys, because this is going to be a long episode for you. You won't We're start wrapping stories. it up. We're just reading the one. Just read the we, one. We, we, we all decided that our top three stories were some combination they of were. the story that I read, the Here's, story that yep, Erica just yep, read. You're right. I remember this now. I'm trying to get out of here. Am I the asshole? Sorry. Here's my story. Am I the asshole? Oh, wait. Should I just like ruin your whole time by interrupting you the, the whole time? time? The thing is, we have iron resolve and can speak through it. Yeah. Once you've pissed in your pants a few times... <laughs> I've been around the block, okay? I've pissed in my pants a time or two. And the thing is, I have clown pants. <laughs> <laughs> I have clown pants in the shoebox on my crotch. is They're huge. Size 46. <laughs> Toe box, idiot. That's a shoebox. Am I the asshole for dating my stepdad and my principal at the same time? Can we get a clean when, one? Hang on. What was that? Am I the asshole for dating my stepdad and principal at the same time? What? <laughs> Fucking bonkers. When I was in high school. Can we get a name for this listener? Lucy. Thank Lucy. you. When I was in high school, I was a bit of a troublemaker. Ooh. And that led me to my principal's office quite often. In my junior year, me we got a new principal for who for some reason had a soft spot for me. He never gave me any harsh punishments for being kicked out of my classes or getting into fights and generally let me off the hook. He was an overall laid back dude and definitely won over the entire school within just a few weeks with his cool personality. The love cool, a cool way he sat on a chair. I love a cool president and a cool principal. <laughs> Sounds like a good guy. Nothing could ever go wrong here. He would always let me chill in his office and calm down whenever I needed to. And soon enough, I was eating lunch in there and spending most of my free time with him. At the time, I honestly didn't think too much of it. But of one course day, not. You were a high schooler. That's how grooming starts. <laughs> but he said that she's super mature for her age and that people his age just don't get him like she does. But one day <laughs> in my senior year, I got into a really nasty fight with another student and the nurse ended up calling my parents to come get me. I had a cut on my arm that didn't hurt very bad, but looked bad. I decided to act like it hurt so I could leave early. Classic high school move. Yeah. Yeah. I would have done that too. Yeah. So while I was waiting to be picked up in the principal's office, my principal started getting pretty handsy with me. Extremely weird. Horrible. At first, he Absolutely was able to horrible. just play it off as just concerned for my well-being. But I'm not stupid and eventually realized what he was doing. We ended up doing the nasty right there on his desk. Insane. Such ex escalation. Like, <sighs> wild. I, does the listener says they're eighteen at this point? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't make it okay, but no. all of a sudden the door opens and my stepdad walks in. Now me and my stepdad never really had a father daughter relationship. He More was, of a fuck me in the pussy type relationship. Ugh. He was always. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> he was always just the nice guy that my mom married a few years before I got into high school. I mean, sometimes we'd go out and do things, but we were more semi-friends than family. Anyways, when he walked in, I was beyond scared. Of course. I mean, who wouldn't be if their stepdad walks in on them bent over with the 38-year-old principal's on the 38-year-old principal's desk? <laughs> and instead of being upset or angry, like I thought he would be. He was horny. He asked to join. Obviously, we said yes. I guess obviously, I didn't really... Obviously. obviously. Not obviously. <laughs> it'd be rude. It's like when you offer someone water in the room. You're like, yeah, I'll take it. I'm not going to drink it, but it'd be rude to say no. I guess I hadn't really ever thought about it, but my 
stepdad is smoking hot. That makes. I want to know who whose idea was it for him to join? Was the principal like, you know, he wants to lose, <laughs> or was the daughter just like, I mean, you could join us. Like, either way, I don't like it. No, horrible, horrible situation. Obviously, grooming and everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. The weirdest part is in my head. I can only imagine how our high school is set up, and it's like the principal's office is like through the. Ses- secretary area like you had to get through multiple yeah, that's how my principal's areas. office was too that's the weirdest part yeah and that's yeah so it's just like it's one thing if the office is a secluded bathroom where maybe you have a rooftop moment a la scrubs my dad's smoking hot all right stepdad <laughs> stepdad <laughs> my, my dad my dad was a looker as well where did I leave off? I left off at him being yeah, honestly, smoking hot. Honestly, I never thought of it like that, yeah. My stepdad's smoking hot, and I mean, if he's down, I guess I'm down. After that, all, after that, we all started frequently hooking up together, and somehow that ended up becoming dates, even after I had graduated and gone away to college. Eventually, I moved in with my ex-principal, and things between the three of us have become very serious. We've been dating in a poly relationship for the past five years now. Sometimes my mom will call me crying, wondering why her husband isn't intimate or all lovey-dovey with her anymore. (sighs) And I just have to play along like I don't know why. While at the same time, he's planning on filing for a divorce and moving in with me and uh, my ex-principal. So we can all live together. He just contacted a lawyer last week. The only reason that this has taken so long is because divorces are expensive and he and my mom aren't exactly well off. And he's been having to secretly uh, settling money aside for the divorce and the big move. It's taken him a while now, but he has enough saved up that we can live comfortably. Plus, he's still working alongside with my ex-principal and I. Hang on. Oh, they're they're all just working. They all just have a job. They all have an income. They don't all work at the school. No. This, so we got shit for this as well because we didn't spend a long time deliberating about why it's horrible in grooming. So it obviously is a gross, disgusting abuse of power by not only the principal, but also the stepdad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was not a stepdad, though. He was the dad who stepped up when tasked with committing a heinous crime. He did it. Bad joke. I didn't like it. I almost jumped in and I was like, you know, I don't think we both need to make a bad joke. <laughs> yeah. You I don't think I need to tag team this one. <laughs> <laughs> horrible, horrible situation. Now, they did send us an update and we read that on the Christmas episode this year. Mm-hmm. And they swear that they're doing fine. So I'm happy. The mom isn't. Yeah. That's the part that like on you... You have done nothing wrong in the situation. You were groomed. Mm -hmm. You are still currently being groomed. You are being taken advantage of. You did nothing wrong until the whole, you know, didn't tell your mom for five fucking years. Yeah. Insane. That none of you had the fucking cojones to fess up to what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, I mean, I yes, the divorce is expensive, but it's like, if there's three incomes, I think you guys can kind of take it on the chin to just get divorced instead of saving for five years. Did, was there some pun there with three incomes and taking it on the chin? Was there anything there? No. Okay. There didn't have to be. You made there be something I was just there. asking. Erica looked like she was about to pipe up. It wasn't. And if you were about to pipe up, it's like, I mean, I'm going to join in with the piping up. <laughs> you know if I mean? you need a third person like to help the dad, pipe. Like the stepdad. Yeah. I'll help pipe up. I'll help pipe up. Sometimes I feel bad for lying oh, to my mom about a- why he doesn't love her, but at the same time, I don't want her to hate me like I know she will when she finds out. She's going to find and out, rip the Band-Aid off, tell her that you're doing it. It's, if she knows, then she should be more mad at him than you. Yeah. Because he's for the sure. one taking advantage of you. Yeah, it's a lot grosser f- from all of them. She should definitely have a lot more anger towards the stepdad. Break up with them. So am I an asshole for selling my mom's husband and starting a poly relationship with him and my ex-principal? Yes, it's bad. It's a little icky the more you think about it, but it's such a wild, wild ride. Episode 53, that one was in. First one of the new year. Yeah. It was a wild fucking story. Yeah. Got us taken off. I think it was our first TikTok ban. Yeah. It started the trend of us getting banned like every three weeks. 
Yeah. Killed her numbies. Anything else on that story, folks? <sighs> Wild. Listeners, step up your game. Send us the juicy gossip. We have gotten so many good stories, and we appreciate every single person who we takes really the time do. to send in stuff. We can't obviously read all of them. This is a big year for the judges. Huge mm-hmm. year. We Do we want to disclose how much money we made? No. Do we have a number? No. Oh. <laughs> we It's saying that we made any money at all over the past year. Correct. Uh, we've been able to grow almost to a million TikTok followers. Getting close. Yeah. Close to like 60-ish thousand weekly unique listeners, maybe more. Uh, insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah. We dropped merch multiple times. Multiple times. Um, you guys have bought all of it, which has mm, been insane. Sheesh hat, might have, sheesh hat was last year, technically. Not yeah. this year. Uh, yeah, that ended in October. Yeah. Um, but Patreon launched. We're doing great stuff over there. But more than that, guys, just thanks for sticking around. We really appreciate you. We're going to make so much good content for you. Forever and always. This will be our job forever. It's never ending. We're going to, we're going to, I should have extrapolated the data on how many episodes we're going to do. We'll be 79 shitting for It's going to be a lot. And thanks for all of it. The judges love you. Somebody kiss on beat. You really threw me at the last second there. And I still nailed it. Yeah. I do it as a bit. I could do it on beat if I ever wanted to. Liar. Have a good week, everyone. Love you. Bye.